where he's narrow, like really, really AP compressed. And like when he's standing, his like feet are way out to the side. Um, I mean, when I tried to bring him inwards, he's like, it, he, it's, uh, he can't even come close to getting his like first net head on the ground. He's like way out. Um, so I was gonna, uh, I, I guess I was gonna ask kind of like some first steps, but you just gave some really good ideas with Misha there. Um, but he's a pretty active guy. Uh, so I was wondering, so like once I do stand him up and start maybe doing some, so, you know, once we start obviously kind of maybe getting into some of this, this high squatting stuff, but if I get him in those staggered stance positions, um, will you, will you add a constraint to someone's foot in that case? Like, um, we sometimes get their, uh, like, will you start with like a heel elevated or maybe even getting like a, a lateral wedge to sort of help them gain a little bit of that IR? I was kind of wondering how, how you might go through that. So what I'm thinking about here is, cause it sounds like you, you have someone who you need to, you need to teach pronation of the foot, but I'm also assuming that you probably need to restore external rotation as well up in the hips. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. I mean, even being in like hook line and if I even try to have, um, even sort of get his feet anywhere near like pronation while he's laying down, he already feels like a pulling and through it and through his hips uh -huh. and lower back. So, okay. So with this person, well, the nice thing is you have a skill that you can utilize to increase range of motion potentially in the foot. I don't know if you've done testing there, but it sounds like if you got someone who can't get, go like ahead version and and this and like that in the calcaneus at all essentially did you say e version or inversion uh no e version okay so then this is a prime candidate for someone so if we know he needs probably er as well but you also know you need to cheat you need to you need to get him into a range that he might not have access to yet you can use manual therapy to almost skip a step and cheat into that so so i would <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, no, yeah. yeah. What are your go-tos for that? Uh, man, just take yourself back to classic PT school. <laughs> and yeah, I, I mean, seriously, I, I think the joint glides that we, we learned in PT school, so a little bit of traction and driving calcaneal eversion, those work pretty well. I'll do that. I'll do some different things to go after dorsiflexion, which like, uh, you know, but Taylor manipulation or Taylor's manipulation, uh, your posterior glides at the ankle, posterior glide of the distal tib fib, um, and then midfoot mob. So like doing a, a grade five to the first ray, um, proximally doing a cuboid whip, whip, excuse me. Um, all of those things to get you into dorsiflexion work really well in eversion. So you might consider doing those and then to, to echo what you were saying before, if you put him in a, in a ramp to elevate the heels, so that way you're biasing ER, but he still can't contact first ray onto the ground, then you could utilize something like a lateral wedge or um, um, something of that nature to, to get into position. But then also, too, you might consider just if you're doing something in standing, maybe you get him in like, a, let's say you're using a wall squat as an example. You could have him wall squat into position, have him offset because that works really well. I've been doing a lot more offset wall squats. Uh, that will work really well because that's going to at least allow you a little bit of rotation so it's easier to get the tuck because sometimes when you got someone who's squished front to back, um, they're going to have some difficulty creating the tuck without any cheats. So you could do something like that and then just have him see if he can sense a discerning inversion and eversion because uh, a lot of times with this type of person um odd request does he by some chance or odd question does he by some chance have a bunion and a taylor's bunion uh not not yet <laughs> he's working on it <laughs> yeah is like favorite uh his favorite sport he spends mostly is like cycling. And so whatever reason he's not doing a lot of like propulsion and now and then for work, he's like on his knees a lot. He does like a lot of weatherization. So he's actually like not standing a ton. Oh, okay. Um, well, the reason why I say that is sometimes when you're cueing someone to potentially drive 
calcaneal eversion. Some individuals will create most of the motion through the midfoot or forefoot, and they won't actually get true calcaneal eversion. So what you'll see is, but what people will inevitably do is instead of creating eversion, what they'll do is they'll they'll essentially plantar flex the first ray even further. So you'll see them almost lead through the uh, um, lead through the first ray to try to create the motion. And so what you see is you see the toe like the the big toe kind of splay further out, as opposed to the calcaneus tipping in. It's almost like they're reaching with the the big toe. Like it'll uh, and again I'll I'll use my my, since I'm a foot model, I'll use my foot to demo it, but it looks kind of like that. I can't even do it, but it's like that happens. Like they reach with the toe like that. And uh, yeah, watch it on the replay. Um, but just be mindful of that. If you see them really push through the big toe, then they're not getting legit calcaneal eversion. So to, to kind of recap, Cam, you want to do things that involve... Um, offset positions to start. And will you yeah. will you work them like both sides like offset? Will you go like go right and then left on it? Yeah, you absolutely could if they're restricted both sides. I think that's totally reasonable. Um, if you're lazy, sometimes I am um, because if if we we kind of know that most most individuals have a right sided bias, if you can get them to go left and that gets all the measures changed that you want. Sometimes I'll just have people do the left. Um, because then too, if if I have them only doing one side, it's gonna take them less time to get their stuff done and they're more likely to be adherent to their moves. Yeah, her word. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Yeah, right. I put him in hook line and tried to just cue him to do that. He just like, he just, it looked like his foot was gonna cramp. Like it was still, like you were saying, she was trying to bring like first ray down, but it just like, like his arch actually went up even more when I tried to add him like Ebert. So, mm -hmm. so that's that's probably him reaching with the big toe. I would also consider if you use hook line cam, you can elevate the heels there too. That will work really well. Yeah, I tried that today and it still looked like kind of painful there. Gotcha. Uh, you could also try offsetting in hook line. Okay. Yeah, so I'll put like one foot ahead of the other. Or your other option could be to put like a, a pillow or something underneath the right hip if you're trying to get him to turn left. Oh, okay. Yeah, I started trying to do some hip shifts, but he, he was kind of, I don't know, I felt like he was kind of cheating somehow because he had a really narrow per pelvis. So I couldn't tell if he was hiking on one side. But yeah, I like that. I like the pillow under the hip thing. Yeah. All right, awesome.